Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a new Chrome box from Asus. This is the Chrome Box 4, and this looks like a mini PC, which it kind of is, but it's running with the Google Chrome OS versus what you might find on a Windows mini PC. And we're going to take a closer look at what this Chrome box can do in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Asus. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Chrome box is all about. Now, the price point on this at the moment is about four hundred and eighty five dollars. There are a number of different configuration options available that will vary the price up quite a bit. Uh, the top configuration will put you at a price point very close to what you might experience with an Apple Mac Mini, which has that M1 processor. So you can certainly configure your way into an expensive machine here. So you may want to look at the lower end configurations because I don't think a Chrome box needs all that much horsepower to do what it sets out to do. Now you could install Windows on this if you really start hacking away at it, but it's not easy. So I think if you wanted something that can run Windows, I would look at something other than this one. Now the configuration that we have on this device has an i3-1011U processor. That's an Intel chip. It has eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of onboard storage. And we took it apart a little bit earlier on a live stream so you can see what it looks like inside. I was pleased to see that the RAM is in dual channel configuration, meaning there's two sticks of RAM. That gives it the maximum performance for this processor. Even the four gig configuration also apparently has two sticks of RAM, which is great. You see that Wi-Fi 6 radio there on the right hand side of it. And above that Wi-Fi radio is the M2 SATA SSD that was installed in this machine. So it's marginally upgradable, at least from the sense of RAM and storage, which is not something you always see with a Chromebook. So it's kind of nice to see that built in here. Now, the other day I had a bunch of people ask me about the value proposition of a Chrome box versus a Chromebook. A Chromebook, of course, is a laptop. Many Chromebooks cost a lot less than this thing does, and you can ultimately hook up a Chromebook to a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse and get a desktop experience. And I think it really comes down to what you need. A lot of people like having a desktop computer and don't need a laptop, and this would certainly work well as a desktop. One thing I would note is that if you were to compare apples to apples from a configuration standpoint, uh, this as configured will cost a little less than a Chromebook with the same configuration. So you'll save a little bit uh, by getting that level of performance out of this versus a Chromebook, but you do have to still bring the keyboard, the mouse, and the monitor because this does not come with any of that stuff. But ultimately, you'll probably be a little bit ahead on price with the Chromebox variant here. Now, the build quality on this will look very similar to prior iterations of the Chrome box from Asus. It is all plastic, nothing spectacular, but I do like the port selection on here. There is a lot of useful ports on this one. Uh, so you do have your headphone microphone jack here in the front. You've got two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports here. Both of these will do 10 gigabits per second max with the right equipment. And you can see there's a little lightning bolt next to each of these because these will charge your phone or tablet even when the computer is powered down. So it can kind of double as a phone charger. Uh, you've got a micro SD card slot here for augmenting its onboard storage or for moving files back and forth. On the back, you've got a Kensington lock for locking it down on a desk and preventing it from walking off somewhere. You have gigabit ethernet here. You saw the Wi-Fi was built in. Wi-Fi 6 is installed. You've got three more 10 gigabit USB ports here. Then you've got two HDMI outputs and then a full service USB type C port. So you can actually hook up three 4K 60 Hertz displays to this at the same time. And that is something you can't do on a Chromebook either. So if you wanted all those displays hooked up, you have that functionality here. And you can actually power the whole computer off of that USB type C port. So if you had a monitor that has power delivery, you could conceivably hook it up with a single cable and be done with it. It does have a Visa mount in the box, so you can mount it on the back of a monitor. Now you'll note here it also has a power input, and that is for the included power adapter. So you could go with this one or this one. Oddly, this thing has a 90 watt power supply in the box. It doesn't need all that much power, but I suspect that because uh, it does have so many USB ports on here, they wanted to ensure there was adequate power for all 
USB devices that were attached, but it definitely has more power than it needs, but it's only going to use the power it requires. And in my testing, it rarely got above 30 watts, even under load. Now there is a fan on here, but it's not very loud. In fact, most of the time when you're using Chrome OS, you're not pushing the hardware too heavily. So that fan is really going to kick on very rarely in most use cases. But even when it is on, it's not all that loud or distracting. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs in action. I've got it hooked up to a 4K display running at 60 hertz. And we'll start with some of the basics here. We'll load up the Chrome web browser and visit the NASA homepage and see how everything comes up here. And as you can see, even at 4K scaled to 200%, it's still pretty quick and responsive here. That's what I would expect out of a recent Intel processor like this. So I think if you're doing uh, any kind of basic work on here, you're going to have a good experience doing web browsing, using Google Docs, using some other web-based applications. Uh, the i3 processor is perfectly well suited for that. And when you're doing this kind of stuff, the fan generally stays off or very, very low from a noise standpoint. So altogether a pretty quiet and nicely performing machine for doing the basics. And here we have a 4K 60 frames per second YouTube video playing back. It did drop a few frames when it first got started, but it's otherwise been able to keep up with everything without an issue. So if you're watching Netflix and Twitch and other video services, you shouldn't have any problems watching video on this. Just note though that this doesn't support HDR video like you'll see on Amazon Prime and Netflix and many of the other popular video services. So while this will work fine plugged into a 4K TV, it's not going to deliver the same level of color that you would get out of a TV box dedicated for that purpose. And this also doesn't support a lot of the fancier surround sound modes either. But for video playback on a desktop, no problem, it seems to be doing just fine. Just a couple of drop frames at the outset, but it's been otherwise uh, keeping up with what we're throwing at it here. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 116. That puts it right within the margin of error of a slightly more expensive Chromebook that we looked at running with the very same configuration. So we're getting the performance we expected. And you can also see how this performs versus some lower cost Chromebooks that we've reviewed in the past. Now, a little while back, I did a video talking about how Chrome OS differs from Windows and the Mac. It is a very different and a more limited experience. You can't just go buy Microsoft Office and throw it on here. Uh, you can run the web-based version of Microsoft Office or you could go out and grab the Android version and run that Android app here on your Chrome box, but it is not the same as what you might get on the Windows and Mac side of things. It has less features, but you do have access to the full Google Play Store, and a lot of the Android apps you might have on your phone, if you're running Android, are also available on your Chrome box. But just know that not all of these apps translate that well to a keyboard and mouse interface, because most of the Android apps were designed for a touch screen or a mobile phone screen or both, and some things fare better than others. Let me show you an example of a game that doesn't do too well in the desktop system here. So this is an Android game called League of Legends Wild Rift, and it anticipates us having a touch display. Now the game looks great as you can see here, but I have to move my mouse pointer over to where my hand would usually go in order to move the character around. Now this might be a little bit easier on a trackpad versus the contraption that I've got here at the moment, but it's still not an ideal interface where you've got to move a mouse pointer over to the section of the screen where you would normally be touching to move the character around. Clearly this game was not designed to be run on desktop. Now there are a lot of Android games that support game controllers, and if you have one of those games uh, and a game controller that's compatible like an Xbox or PlayStation controller, that will work just fine on here. But this kind of stuff that's anticipating a touch input is going to feel really weird on desktop. And we encountered some of the same things running iPad and iPhone apps on the new M1 Mac as well. So the Android stuff will run great on here, but if the interface isn't quite designed for the desktop, uh, interface here, it may not work all that great. Now you'll also encounter apps that you can get on your phone but not on your Chrome box, and that's because those apps are just not compatible with the Chrome OS interface here. So it's going to be hit or miss on the Android stuff. It still hasn't been improved as much as I would like it to be, but it's there, and if you've got an app that works as a desktop app, great, you can run it here and it'll run quite well. You'll also though run into some weird stuff like we're seeing here with the Xbox Game Pass streaming app it doesn't fill the whole screen. We've got some weird borders around it too. So you'll always run into these 
wacky little issues along the way while you're trying to get things to run in your Chromebox. Now for the best results playing games on a Chromebox, game streaming is probably your best option. Uh, this is the GeForce Now service that we're running here, and this is streaming from NVIDIA's server somewhere in the cloud. But they have a Chrome OS specific version of their service that runs in the web browser, and of course it supports Xbox controllers, and that one works really nicely. Google has their Stadia service, which we've tested in the past and works great even on lower end Chromebooks. And there's other things out there like Rainway that allow you to do the same thing from your own gaming PC. So if you're looking to play games on a Chromebook or Chromebox in this case, uh, the best way to do it is to stream those games. And I would pick a service that offers a web client that works best with the Chrome OS operating system. Now, one of the things that I love about Chrome OS is that you can run Linux applications on it. It's a little bit more of an advanced feature, obviously, but if you've ever wanted to learn Linux, it's a very affordable way to do it because you can get a very low cost Chromebook, for example, get your command line going and start installing uh, open source applications like Firefox, for example. Uh, so we're actually running Firefox on a Google Chrome operating system, and it works pretty nicely. Not as quick as the native browser, but if you wanted to start messing around with some other browsers on your Chromebook, now you can, or on your Chromebox in this instance. Uh, this is LibreOffice, which is a full open source Office suite that includes a spreadsheet and a word processor, and all of your files that you're working on get saved locally. And this layers on top of the existing Chrome OS native browser and the Android apps that you want to play with as well. And that's where having a desktop machine like this one with a little more memory and storage might make some of these features more useful because you're not going to be as limited as you would be on a cheaper Chromebook. But still, it's pretty cool, uh, no matter what Chrome device you're using, to start exploring a lot of what the open source world has to offer in a way that I think is very welcoming and kind of risk-free because this Linux installation sits in a container that's separated from the rest of the computer. So no matter what you do, you really can't break anything, and it's a great way to learn. Now, like all Chrome-based devices, there is an end-of-life date for updates on it. Once it passes that date, you no longer get updates, but the computer will still work. Now, this one will stop getting updates in June of 2028. That is about seven years from the time that I'm recording this video. And even if you buy this three years from now, this particular model expires on that June of 2028 date. So just be aware of that. But altogether, I think it's a pretty decent little Chrome OS device. Chrome desktops are not all that plentiful these days, so this may be the only game in town if you're in the market for one. But I like the way it performs. I love the port selection on it. And I also like the fact that you have some degree of upgradability here, especially for the RAM and storage. You should be able to go to 16 gigabytes on this one for the memory. And if you're running a lot of Linux applications on it or trying to get a bunch of tabs open in the browser at one time, having the ability to go beyond what most Chromebooks have for memory might be useful here. And of course, having an upgradable storage option is also useful for loading in a lot of Linux applications and other things that you may want to do on it. But if you're unsure if a desktop solution is the way you want to go, I would shop very carefully and see what options you have for Chromebooks because you can connect those to a monitor and use them like a desktop, but also take them with you on the road. And that might have more value for some folks looking for more flexibility. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Mark Bollinger, Sergio Morales, Mark Dell, Jim Callagher, and Steven Sue. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.